Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ and Friends. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and today my friends are Sandy Pukel and Marisa Marinelli. Sandy is the founder of the Holistic Holiday at Sea Cruise, and Marisa is the director of operations, and they are going to tell us how we can cruise our way to health. Please welcome them both. Hi, Sandy. It's good to see you again. Good to see you again, Chef AJ, and thank you. Thank you for having us, and thank you for being part of the Holistic Holiday at Sea for many years. You... Absolutely. It, it's a great, it's a great event. And I, yeah, you do just one a year still, right, Sandy? Yeah. But I want to tell you something. I thought about this before getting on the show. There's very few people who've ever had a larger audience in a cooking class anywhere than you had when you were on the cruise. And I don't care where you are, what network, what country you're in, you used to get four to 500 people in a cooking class. Whoever got whoever sees four to five hundred people in a cooking I, class. I appreciate that. And Sandy, those classes, I still remember them. And you gave me some DVDs of them. They were the funnest experience ever. And I think that's where I perfected my pitching arm because what that's when I the, the room was so big, I was like throwing the food at people. And I've gotten pretty good at that since being on the cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Has, right. has COVID made it more difficult for you to do your job? Yeah, yeah of course it has. You know. One year, first of all, they told us at one time everybody had to be vaccinated to come on the cruise. So if we had to invite certain teachers that we knew under the table were vaccinated or not. But even like allowing us to sample foods now and do stuff on the ship, they're very cautious about things now. Yeah, that that's that. May Have you ever thought of doing like holistic holiday at land? Well, you know, we did it for 30 years before the cruise. And we're thinking about doing it again now. We're trying to... The big challenge is finding a place like with a, that could accommodate a thousand people in a hotel. It's not so easy. It's not, it's so, not, easy, so, many... but it's not so easy, but let's talk offline because I have some ideas about that. Okay, great. I, accept I, would, that. I, I am just, I'm a land lover. So when you start doing the ones on dry land, I'll come. I back. know. You, do I not know you're a land lover? Do you know how? <laughs> I tell everybody, getting you here by plane is always a mission. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. So who is your new director of operations? Miss Miss Marisa Marinelli. She'll say hello to everybody. So hi. Thank you so much for having me on as well, Chef AJ. It's so nice to finally meet you. I've heard so many wonderful things. I've seen so many videos of yours. So you're doing some amazing stuff out there. Um, so I, I joined Holistic Holiday at Sea just over a year ago. Um, I've known Sandy for a long time through the macrobiotic community. Um, I have my own healing story uh, through macrobiotic plant-based food, changing complete overhaul of my lifestyle and diet uh, over 20 years ago. And I'm sitting here today because of that diet and lifestyle. So I'm a walking, uh, talking example of what that can do to you. And this has always been a passion of mine. My background is in uh, fundraising, development, events, productions. Uh, so this was just a natural fit uh, for me to join this company. And it's been, it's a combined passion project and my love and my career. So I'm really, really happy to be here and work with Sandy. Um, it was my first cruise this past uh, March. It was, it was amazing uh kicked off we were on a brand new ship for the msc seascape um so there's a lot of new stuff we can talk about later that's coming up with the ship and everything and and how things have changed post covid but it's still really wonderful well i'd love if you don't mind i'd love to hear your healing story because i know that one of the things that's so popular in the annual cruise is i, I forget what you call it. it's like a a, a recover it's like a recovery, recovery panel right recovery yeah panel. That's, that's one of the most popular things and so it sounds like you could almost be on that panel Yes, I was on that panel last year. Um, I'd like to say the recovery panel is the heart and soul of the cruise. Um, it really is because you hear all the different stories of people are walking and talking, living this lifestyle, um, and you get inspired. The whole mission of the cruise is to inspire you that this is this is what you can achieve when you put attention into what you're eating and what you're doing day to day. But a little bit about my story. So mine started when I was 19 years old, which believe it or not was 20 years ago. <laughs> and um, I have, I was diagnosed with ulcerated colitis. Uh, at the time I was a performer, I was a dancer, very active, very athletic. 
and very strong. So all of a sudden, I was extremely sick, um, having up to 20 bowel movements a day, you know, a lot of descriptive, horrible stuff, very weak, loss of appetite, loss of everything, couldn't eat anything, uh, couldn't contain anything down. And for two years, I really went through the medical system of going on and off certain medications, trying different things, being in and out of hospitals for weeks at a time, weeks at a time. Um, it was a very severe case. And at, you know, two years into it, my doctor kind of threw his hands up and said, you're on your own. And I'll never forget this. You know, I'm about 20 years old, tw not even 21. And he basically just put my own life in my own hands. Like I knew what I was supposed to do with it. And I, so through the Crohn's, ironically, through the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America, I came across a, a young woman who was reading a book, Virginia Harper's book. You may know her. She's part of the macrobiotic community. She's she's a speaker on our cruise, um, controlling Crohn's and through the controlling Crohn's disease through the natural way. And that was her book. And I read it. And I was inspired. I mean, within a day, I finished it, and that thus thrusted me into this journey of you can change your diet and you can heal yourself. Um, long story short, that took me through a variety of macrobiotic teachers all the way to the Cushy Institute, um, all the way through all the levels over the course of the many years later. Um, I worked for the Cushy Institute for a little bit. I actually did their summer conference. I was involved for five years and then ran that last one before Matt, Misha Cushy passed away in 2014. So just a long history. Um, and it there's ups and downs, there's battles, but I mean, I remember my first week of that way to health program and my, you know, I, my bowel stopped within three days of being there and chewing your food and, um, and just for the first time eating vegetables, I had never eaten vegetables in my whole life other than broccoli. So it was just a testimonial how I would say, if I can do it, the pickiest eater in the entire world, I probably had the taste buds of a five-year-old, you know, if I can change my diet and introduce these new, delicious, wonderful foods, I promise you anybody in the world can do it. Um, and it's determination, commitment um, of just, you know, having faith plowing through and saying, I know this is going to work through all those ups and downs, because we all know lit healing isn't linear. Um, but I know that I'm sitting here today because of that. Um, and I'm just, I, it's, it, there's incredible gratitude and then you, you have to pay that forward. So this is a dream organization, a dream mission for me of just wanting to get that message out. But that's wonderful. I, that's so cool. I love it. So did you, was that, you, you said this was your first time on the cruise last year, but was that your first time ever on any cruise? Uh, it was my second holistic holiday sea cruise. Other um, the, the first time I I was uh, the director of it. Um, probably my third cruise overall. So I was on a regular cruise at, at one point uh, many years ago. Probably over ten, over eleven ten years ago, um, which was fun, you know. And there's there's I I kind of ate there, you know. I got by throughout the week. But it is true that there's not a lot of vegan options. There's not a lot of good quality foods. Um, I mean, I remember feeling a little bit off after that. And then you have to do your recovery foods and catch up and kind of put your body back into shape after. But why? Why have to do that when you can attend a cruise that already has those elements into it? And you're coming off the cruise feeling even better than when you got on as opposed to the other way around. So um, that's that one of so my favorite parts. I know that's yeah. so cool because when you think about it, most people gain so much weight on a cruise and people on the Holistic Holiday Sea, I'm, I mean, if they wanted to, I mean, not that you want a cruise to lose weight because the food is so healthy. You know, Sandy, I'm curious how many people are already vegan or plant-based when they come to the cruise and how many are maybe being dragged along by somebody else? <laughs> a lot of dragging along. In the beginning, it, we used to look at it like this, that I would say 50% were maybe, <clears throat> maybe a third were plant-based already. A third was sick and they were coming to try to find out what was going on. And then a third would just either dragged along or something like that. But the cruise line used to tell us something very funny that none of our none of our people canceled because in regular cruise lines, there's lots of cancellations. But our people didn't cancel because they were there for a purpose. Yeah. And they were committed. And they never had, they never saw that before. 
you told me you were vegan now. I, I felt I was vegan a long time, 47 years, but you told, you got me beat 54 years. How the heck does one 54 years ago decide to become vegan? Well, I went to a, I went to a lecture in Manhattan, a cooking class, actually. A woman by the name of Rebecca Dabowski, this little old lady in Midtown Manhattan. And a friend of mine told me about it. It was, and um, when I got into the, to the, what she had to say, it resonated with me. It's like, you know, she's, you know what her interesting part was? It wasn't just about the diet. It was about the lifestyle, what you would attract. One of the examples she gave, you're in Manhattan. She says, a parking spot will open up for you. You eat well, you become one with the universe, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You become one with everybody. You get along with everybody. And when I first did it, my parents said to me, Sandy, this is great, but what are you going to do when you have kids? And I said, Ma, because I want to have kids, I want to do this. Because I want my kids to grow up in a sane world. I want my kids to have other people to play with. I want my kids to be able to give this philosophy. And even to this day, am I the strictest one in the family? 100%. I raised five kids this way, nine grandchildren. I'm, I'm the strictest, without a doubt. But at least they're conscious of it. You know, they they have a good background, you know. My my son tells me all the time, I'm smarter than you, Dad. I know how to do things better than you. And he's probably right because they're why I'm I'm probably too strict. I'm probably too strict. I'm learning over the years how to widen out my lifestyle a little bit as far as food and diet. Well, I didn't know you had that many kids and grandchildren. If it's okay to ask, how old were you when you went vegan 54 years ago? And then I'll I wasn't 100 vegan. For, I was 24 years old. 56. 25, actually. So I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 79 next month in, in September. Wow. Congratulations. I'm guessing you, you've lived a pretty healthy life. Pretty good. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I eat, I, I eat well. And <clears throat> what I've learned over the years, it's not just the food. You got to exercise, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always say food is one thing. It's great. It takes care of so many things, but it's not enough. It's not enough. When I hear people tell me they're vegan, that doesn't count. Sorry, that's great. That's that's a start. Because even vegan, you, we know that. There's junk food vegans. And in this day and age, you could be vegan and eat like crap. So I exercise every day. Every day I do something. That's, and well, you you know, also on the cruise, you bring some of the great fitness people like Robert. Oh, yeah. yeah. So if, if people want that kind of vacation uh -huh. and even the cruise, I remember my favorite exercise class on the cruise was I took an underwater spinning class. That was so cool. They had spin bikes in the water like, yeah, yeah. and you were outside. It was really it was really cool. It's pretty nice to do any kind of exercise sailing around the Caribbean, right? Having the ocean in your backyard. Not so shabby. <laughs> Absolutely. So what do I say? So here's something, you know, I, I hate to bring this up, but if I don't, people are going to say this to me. And this is what they say, that there's like these very um, hardcore ethical vegans say we, we should cruise because, you know, of the impact, environmental impact and animals and blah, blah, blah. So I'm, I'm not I'm not minimizing that, but I'm it's just they, they, they harp on me for promoting cruises. And my feeling is, is I don't promote cruises. I promote vegan cruises because I feel that there's so much good to be had by going because I feel like it's more of an educational experience. It's almost like a floating conference. That's exactly what it is. Number one reason people come is for education. Not even close. We ask four reasons why people come on the cruise. Education, visiting ports, the food, and camaraderie, you know, with other people. Education is like, Two thirds, everybody wants education, 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 education. And, you know, after that, all the other stuff falls into place. Food is next. Yeah. Uh, but education it's, is the power. It's like an education vacation. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you know, and I just want to speak to the whole, the carbon footprint, you know, this is something, and we partner with MSC Cruise Lines. Um, so they've been really wonderful to us for a long time and they're continuing to evolve. And just like, you know, are the electric cars, they're turning more and more electric 
emissions, you can say, um, and I don't want to say that I'm the expert or speak as the expert to it, but um, for what we've been researching, there's more and more um, electric for friendly uh, equipment, even, even from the protocols that they use to dispose of waste among the ship, you know, they will not just dump it in the ocean, they go to the specific docks, um, where and then it's done with the safety method of just a if you lived in that town, you know, they follow those protocols. So there's been a significant reduction of the carbon uh, footprint as there have been over the years. And, you know, we do want people to know that we're aware of that. We're taking steps of this. We understand, you know, we're still transporting, you know, 2,000, 5,000 people around a city at the same time. But, you know, we do want to be conscious of the environment 100%. All right, thank you. Um. Sandy, do you bring your own chefs in or do you teach the chefs there how to make the food? We bring about 15 chefs every year. We do everything. We do all the cooking. We do all the pastries, the desserts from scratch, from scratch. And uh, without sugar, of course, 100%. I always get a kick. We have pizza parties every year. And everybody says to me, Sandy, is this cheap, real cheese? I look at them. What are you talking about? If we're telling you it's a vegan cruise. Why would you question it? But yeah, everything is from scratch, whether the pizzas, we have ice cream parties, we have the meals, desserts and pastas and rice and as organic as possible, not 100%, but organic as possible. And yes, the chefs are the commitment. And we teach the other chefs that assist us because they have a, an MSC on the in the kitchen, they have 165 chefs. That's, inc that's a lot. That's, that's a lot. So the 15 chefs, are there anybody I've heard of in the in the vegan or plant-based world that is one of your 15? <clears throat> well, over the years, we a lot of them said they're getting too old to keep coming back because it's hard work. Sure. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them have written books themselves and stuff like that who have written cookbooks. And and uh, Eric Lasore. Eric Lasore is my favorite, not just my favorite macrobiotic chef. He might just be my favorite chef. Yeah, he's very good. He's been he's been with us and you know many many people and and Lee, right now we have Lee Gross. He's the he's and now we've gotten much more sophisticated. His background is like culinary school, so it's not just winging it natural foods, vegan stuff. We do things very exact portion controls, and we're trying to be very sophisticated and learning how to do it right. Yeah. You can't just throw out a lot of food and then have waste afterwards. You have to be responsible. Yeah. So now we do everything responsibly. I'm guessing, though, like if people are in a mixed marriage, uh, that their companion could eat whatever they want on the cruise. They can. They can. But what has happened over the years, in the dining room, once in a while, we put on vegan-only tables because some people don't want to sit with the husband or the wife. But I look at it. The very first year, a woman called me up and said to me, Sandy, I want to come. But my husband doesn't eat this way. And I said to myself, let him come and learn. Let him come and learn. Maybe after the third day, he'll start eating, instead of having a potato, he'll have brown rice. Instead of having some kind of sauce or milk for breakfast with his oatmeal, he'll have oatmeal without the milk. So to me, it's always a learning experience. And that's what's happened over the years. Yeah. And you have, I mean, for people that are, you have just, not just macrobiotic, you have regular vegan, like, you know, you have, you have oil-free options. I'm not sure about this. I, nothing. Gluten-free, <laughs> oil-free. We have it all. It's not just, it's macrobiotic principles because that's my background as far as the quality, but it's a hundred percent vegan. It's much wider vegan than it is macrobiotic because that's what people are interested in going on vacation. We're on vacation. As much as we say it's education, we're on vacation. And the biggest problem we have is the desserts are so good that people say, I want two and three. And I look at them and say, would you go into a restaurant and order two or three desserts if you were paying for it? And they get embarrassed. Because That's just because it's good, it doesn't mean it has to be education and responsibility also while you're doing it. That's interesting. Yeah, which, yeah I, you probably they probably wouldn't order two or three if they were paying. I'm they do. No, they do. No, no joke. Yeah, they actually wow. do. I'm guessing the pastry chefs probably have to work at night to just meet the demand. You got it. They work all night long. Five pastry chefs. They work from, I think their shift starts at like seven at night till seven in the morning. 
people don't realize how much goes on behind the scenes. What blew me away is like when I would do these demos, even though there were four or 500 people, just the back end, just the help. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah to get it out. That, that's amazing. What was your favorite thing, Marisa, about the cruise? Well, my favorite thing, and I was going to add, is that these aren't just well-balanced meals because anybody can be vegan, but it's not just about being vegan. It's it's taking it to another step where you're consciously putting attention into the dish of what you're going to eat. So I would say it might maybe sort of like a portion control. Um, but you have your you have your pro, you have your protein, uh, plant-based protein. You have your grains. You have your certain number of vegetables. We think about all the elements of what goes into that plate to prepare that plate. So it's really wonderful. So you come out and you feel amazing and all this energy and the desserts are outstanding. I mean, since when can you get sugar-free? I call them guilt-free desserts. And this is a five-course meal. So you're sitting down to dinner and you are served eloquently five courses of the most delicious vegan meals that you can get. And I honestly, I, I, there's no other place that you can go to have that much attention, that high of quality and that high, high end meal prepared. So it's, that is my favorite part of the trip. It's true. It's true. Eating. Even, <laughs> yeah. Even, even like when you go to nice vegan restaurants here, it's not, it's not like a fine dining experience, like on the cruise. One of the things you said when we were talking about, what are we going to talk about is chewing. So is that, is that, a, is, it, is that one of the macrobiotic principles? And, it, and so everybody should have it, but it's certainly become popularity with that. And because everything should become liquefied before it leaves your mouth. People think shoved up in their mouth, they drink water with it and they swallow it whole and then they wonder why they got blockage in their stomachs. Or So if you chew your food really, really well, then your body says, thank you very much. I appreciate you. And if you the body appreciates you and you appreciate your body, you have a beautiful symmetry that if you can't beat that. And then you won't overeat. If you chew, you got to also be willing to walk away from the table. If you're done chewing, and you're full, why keep eating? Well, I can give you a lot of reasons. So it tastes good. <laughs> I know, I understand that. But from the health point of view, yeah. I'm I, I'm 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 from the health point of view. Chewing is the key that you control so many things in your life that you don't realize it where it starts, and it starts right here in your mouth. And it's so everybody I kid around with people at the table, you know, my kids tell me now because I've gotten much more conscious of that myself. I chew much more now than I ever did when I first got into this lifestyle. Wow, that's incredible. You can write a book, Chew Your Way to Health. There are some books, yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. Well, you know, one of your speakers that you've had, Dr. Michael Clapper, he always says, chew your food to a cream. That's right. Yeah, Michael's and coming back again, cruise this, again year. this year. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, let, yeah. Well, I've had a few more questions for you guys personally, but I'd lo also like to find out about the 2025 cruise. I, I wanted, I want to add something when you ask Marissa about her favorite part of the cruise. My favorite part of the cruise is getting a contact high from everybody else having a good time. Yeah, because you're kind of like you're kind of like you remind me of like Mr. Rourke at Fantasy Island welcoming everyone. Yeah, this is it. That's where it's at. And you know what, <laughs> AJ. You know how many we have had marriages, we've had babies born to couples that meet. If you're a single person, why wouldn't you go on a cruise where you know that the lifestyle of the people are going to be similar to what you are, right? Absolutely. Have so, you had, other than yourself, have you had anyone that's literally been at every single sale that you've Yes, had? yes. There's about 10 people who have been on every cruise. There's our 20th anniversary. There's about 10 people who have been on 20 cruises with us. That is incredible. I know. And I, I'd say about a handful of others who apologize. They've missed one. <laughs> wow. You know, I keep thinking about your, the, the chewing through the cream because I think one of my dear friends is Dr. Alan Goldhammer. I don't know if he's ever been on your cruise, but he's a wonderful speaker. He talks about like when, when you go to the bathroom and you see corn, he's like, well, that's proof that you don't That's the key. Yeah. I tell people all the time when they ask me, because I counsel people. And when they ask me, can I eat corn? I said, you can eat corn. But then look in the toilet when you're done eating and see if it's still floating around. Oh, Corn's yeah. the hardest thing to digest. That's interesting. Yeah. That is yeah. really, really and, interesting. And I'll and I'll say too, from the the IBD person, you know, chewing it it, it helped my healing journey immensely because it almost even when you can't get access to the best quality of food, if you chew that food, 
I mean, basically till it's liquefied, if that takes 50 to 100 to 300 times, whatever it is. I mean, you, there's, there's <laughs> scientific facts where you actually produce certain enzymes that help to break down the carbohydrates that start in your mouth. Um, that goes on to releasing certain hormones and it goes to the body that'll help you heal ulcers faster, um, help stimulate the immune system. Um, I know a lot of people concern about weight loss. I mean, it will literally reduce your cravings for sweets, um, fill you up faster. Um, I mean, there's an extreme amount of benefits of, of chewing your food and you're relaxing. You're literally coming to the body. You're calming the body down. I mean, that's what we want on the cruise anyway. You're here to relax. You're here to have a great time. So, I mean, when did you get the opportunity to not have any other distractions, but just to sit there and chew your food? So, yeah. And it's, socialize. It's and socialize. And socialize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm guilty of not always chewing as good as I could, but it's it's a good reminder. I remember when I went to the Optimum Health Institute, there were like signs everywhere. You have to chew each bite at least 32 times. Yeah, well, you don't have to, but you know, if you want to. <laughs> I, I, when I, as I said, when I counsel people and if they have cancer, I tell them they have to chew their food 200 times. They get 30 times, 200 times. Wow, that's amazing. Have you added anything new in the last years in terms of types of classes that? that people can take on the cruise you you have like there's many every hour isn't there like five or six every hour yeah yeah marissa you could talk about it she knows better than i do <laughs> so so yeah so the program has changed over the course of the years we're always looking for new teachers um new subject matters so this is something we're trying we don't have the program launched uh, officially yet for 2025 so we can put that on hold if you go back and check i would say around the fall um early fall we'll probably have something at least something posted about that point. So, um, but there always are classes. You, we at least have three classes going on at the same time as with different rooms. Um, and yes, all the way from the morning, you wake up, you do your, uh, whether it's yoga or Pilates or some type of Tai Chi, um, early meditation, you can have a pick from a, a variety of exercise classes. Um, and then there'll be classes. We have some classes. Teachers have done classes on chewing like Michael Clapter. Uh, we have a variety of doctors coming this year. Um, uh, Michael Greger, Dr. Michael Greger is returning again. Dr. Neil Barnard returning again. Uh, doctors Dean and Aisha Sherzai, they're fantastic. They, they do a lot of research of cognitive health. Um, we have a new fitness instructor this year, uh, Koya Webb. So she, we love her. Uh, she has a great Instagram page and she's coming on to teach yoga this year. Um, Ocean Robbins is returning this year. So he always does a fantastic speech about environmental uh, friendly. Um, Janae Claiborne, another fantastic chef. Um, and she's also, she has a a, a blog, a soul, a sweet potato soul, and a fantastic Instagram. She's doing some onboard cooking classes, um, and the list is continuing on. So um, you can, you know, I can give you the website, it's holistically at c.com to go and check out the schedules. We're continuing to post this, and we'll be posting through uh, through the fall. Yeah, it's an answer to your direct question about the new stuff. We're doing more panels than we ever did. People like panels, mm -hmm. and that's why they could ask the teachers. And, you know, with questions and answers to the teachers. And that's become very popular. Besides the doctor's panel, we have athletes panels. We have many different cooking, you know, classes kind of panels. So people like that, you know, as opposed to just hearing a lecture one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Maybe you could have a chewing panel. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Be sure to give me any information on how people can register, especially because I know sometimes there's like discounts if they register before a certain time. So yeah. that that would be amazing. Do you ever have any, I, I know that you sell, I think, DVDs of pretty much every lecture you've ever had, right? Yeah, everything. Yes, we do. So I'm just wondering, like, is there any way for people like, because, you know, it's it's easy to talk about something that, until people experience it. I don't think they know what an um, amazing experience it is. Do you ever have any like little video clips anywhere where people can kind of see what goes on on the ship? Yes, I'm so glad you asked us that, AJ, because we have a YouTube page now. So if you go to Holistic Holiday at Sea, we have now started to post clips of some of the lectures. Um, they're about two, three minutes long. Um, and then there's also information on how you can actually order the whole full video of that class from that from that clip. So if you see something you like and you want to see the rest of it, write to us and you can go to the website. All the information is on uh, that page. So we're really excited about that. Um, it's something that we're trying to grow so more and more people can 
hop on over there. And, you know, we're, we started with last year, so 2024, but we're going to go back and post some of our previous videos too. So we're, we're trying to go digital. Um, I know everything's been on DVD for a long time, but we're really working to go digital because it's just more accessible. Um, and that's, that that's our goal. So, and every year we record the lectures and they'll be sold um, on the ship. So you can go home with them too. Yeah. What's nice about that is if you're attending one lecture, but you also wanted to see the one at of the course. same time, yeah. that's right. really the reason that I think it's exactly. a great thing to, to do that. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, post the one of me, I did this one cooking <clears throat> class where the, uh, I was spiralizing zucchini and I, you probably weren't there. And then I, there was this like professional football player in the audience and we did like a little lady in the tramp thing and he had this beautiful girlfriend with him but it's still his name was trey his name it was that was really fun i really did and that was a great room by the way the room that you do the cooking demos in yeah 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 i feel like like i'm like a like an entertainer in a las vegas lounge my favorite you are an entertainer what do you mean like an entertainer I mean, <laughs> Thank you. You know, my favorite thing, because you said uh, Marisa had a new ship, but my the old ship, or not that it's old, there was this staircase that I think it went down like between the floor six and five. Yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it just reminded me like of like old time movie stars, like, you know, Ginger Rock. The staircase was like, it's like a Cinderella. That was just my- Glitter, favorite. glitter, glitter. I love yeah. that. And then you were always standing. It's like, I swear to God, I don't think you ate or slept. You were always right there by the bookstore. Mm -hmm. We still have a glitter staircase. Um, uh, our hospitality desk is right in that area. The bookstore is in a little bit of a different location now, but um, so we love that glitter staircase. And the rooms, rooms are different, but where we do the cooking class is actually really cool. There's a cute little nightclub. So it's kind of surround seating. Um, you can kind of be looking down. And so- it's 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 great. So if you ever want to come back on AJ, so yeah. we'd love to have you. <laughs> hey, AJ, you're going to be our secret weapon when we when we start sailing in Alaska because we're going to get that happening soon. God, so you're, you're, that's, you're going to be, up. that's going to be hard to turn down because you were you're speaking my like Alaska. You're, you have a no cut contract. Well, in Alaska. oh my God, yeah, it, was, it might be sooner than you think, AJ. <laughs> Alaska was a really beautiful. I, I mean, I saw it on land, and I saw I really that was Alaska was one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. It is. It's have beautiful. you ever thought that you could get, do like a a whole ship because yeah, I know that there's other people on the ship and they're entitled to be there but it's it's hilarious to me like we're in these healthy lectures and then we walk past all these people smoking it's hilarious well they limit the smoking but we we could we could fill up this ship the biggest problem is the economics they want us to guarantee that the people are going to spend money drinking and gambling. That's the problem with a vegan cruise. We don't <laughs> put the money in the in the casino or the. That's movies. right. Yeah. yeah. As it is, they don't. They like us, but they don't really like us because they don't spend mean. a lot of money on that other stuff. That's that's really funny. It, I, you, it's amazing to me, Sandy, that I don't know if the word is convinced, but that you even got this off the ground twenty years ago with this idea because I know the world was less vegan friendly then. Well, I, I, the guy who I met with, the head food and beverage person, he taught me a great lesson because I went onto the ship and he took me into the dining room and it was a formal dining room and there was goblets and 10 servings of forks and knives and everything like that. And I said to him, Hans, we don't need all that stuff. We eat very simple. And he said to me, Sandy, if you come on our ship, you must, with a capital M-U-S-T, at every meal, have a soup. Have an appetizer, have an entree, have a, a salad, have a dessert. You represent us. Five course meal at every meal. Don't worry about the silverware. We'll take care of that. But and he taught us a great lesson, and people love it. Who yeah. doesn't mind sitting and, down and, if, and getting served? Right, like and, but there are people, for whatever reason, if they didn't want that sit down experience, they go up to, I think it was like the third buffet. They have the buffet. Yeah, upstairs, there's always a salad bar, there's always vegan pizza, there's always sandwiches. Yep. Somebody, had something to do, they don't have to have the fine dining experience. It's not. Yeah, I know. I, I wish we could have our own ship, of course, but the economics of this cruise line doesn't work. Yeah. Well, that's just so oh. amazing. For, for my, now, for now. <laughs> my, one of my favorite things that I remember is that at night, you'd come back in your room and they'd turn down your bed and then they'd have right. a towel folded like an animal and there'd be like little snacks. Like yep. the, 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 you, people would donate, you know? Yeah, yeah. We sell it. People love that. People love to see the presents they get. Instead of chocolate strawberries, you get ch chips or chocolate, whatever it is, you know, good quality, no sugar, cosmetics. You get a lot more cosmetic donations now than we do food. Oh, 
that's like, interesting. Yeah, shampoos and skin creams and lotions and stuff like that. Plus, what what better audience for these companies, you know? Yep. They said you got to capture the audience of people idea. in yeah. this lifestyle. I think, is it possible that I turned you on to one of my friends and he did it one year, California Balsamic? I could have. Yes, they did. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I love that product, by the way. I don't know if you've ever had it, Marisa, but every guest, the first, Sandy uh -huh. show before, but every first time guest gets two free bottles of my favorite vinegar, California balsamic. I, yeah. I eat that all the time. So I that's that's wonderful. It wasn't the cruise I was on, but I, I love them. <laughs> so that's wonderful. Fantastic. That is fantastic. So what are the exact dates of the sale in 2025? So 2025, we're selling March 8th through the 15th. Um, and yes, we are selling cabins now. So it, we are having a sale. So I believe you save $150 on any cabin interior okay. through suite. Um, and I believe it's $200 off the Yacht Club. So this is a perfect opportunity uh, to go to the website, uh, take a look at everything that's going on and reserve your cabin now. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And we're going to, and you know, what? we're running out of ports though in the Caribbean, you know, of 20 years they're not inventing new islands for us. But even though MSC made their own new island, but besides that, we're going to, we're trying to go to different ports of all the time, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So this year's, a, this year's a great itinerary. We're going to Ocho Rios, Jamaica, uh, Georgetown, Cayman Islands, Cozumel, Mexico, and then Ocean Cay, which is the MSC's private island in the Bahamas, which is really, really spectacular, beautiful. I mean, it sparkles. You can't walk out of the island without sunglasses because you just can't see. It's so bright. <laughs> wow. I, I yeah. you know, and, and you have excursions, but if somebody wanted to stay on the ship, they could stay on and do a class too. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. Yep. People like those excursions. You know, it depends on where you're from. You know, they say... They want to go see the islands. They want to go zip lining. You know, they want to go scuba diving. You know, there's all sorts of stuff to do. You know, have you ever so. had it where somebody didn't make it? You know, I think about that I Love Lucy episode. Have you ever had it, Sandy, where somebody just didn't make it back after an excursion? Yeah. Well, I just talked the other day. They just had a nine family members in Alaska, not an hour cruise, didn't make it back, and it cost them about twenty five thousand dollars to recover from that because they got fined by the United States government. And so, yeah, we have one year, one of our cooking teachers, one of our, I won't mention her name. She missed the last boat back. She had to hire a private helicopter and all of a sudden the helicopter came and landed by the port because she missed the thing back. Yeah. They don't wait for you. They that is true. Yeah. That's exactly how it happened in Lucy. It was a helicopter and they lifted yeah, her. They yeah. Don't wait. That's why I don't want to get off the ship because I'm afraid I'm not going to get back on. Well, you're a scaredy cat, but everybody else gets back. Yeah. Well, you know, I have an idea. So have me teach a class before it takes off and then I'll get off the You got it. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> That's a great idea. I don't know how you do that. But, you know, I, I produce like one day. Sometimes I've done a few three-day conferences and I know the amount of work that goes into it. But the, the cruise is like, it, it's eight days, right? Seven nights, eight days? Seven or 10 or 11 even. And just, just well, used to be, yeah. How do you get all? How do you get all those books? You have like an actual bookstore. Yes, we do. We sell thousands, literally thousands of books. We sell thousands, and it's a whole, it's a whole staff that's there. People love it. We have, uh, like Michael Greger spends two nights signing books, and he, his hands. I said, Michael, you got to rest your hand. You know, you got to be ready for the next book signing. And yeah, people love, well, it's education. People want the education. Mm -hmm. As much as everything's mm -hmm. online now, people still like to have a real book in front of them. Mm -hmm. Do you ever, have you ever, or have you ever thought of making a cookbook of the the recipes that you serve on? We have. We have one now. What's it called? Grains and Greens on the Deep Blue Sea. Nice. Does it have some of those pastries that you talked about? That yes, we do. Yes, we do. That's I'll send you a copy. I'll make yeah. sure to send you a copy. Yeah, no, that sounds fantastic. Well, gosh, it sounds like so much fun. Do do people like what is what is the youngest that you've had in your group? Do people bring like babies? I know they bring. Oh yeah, totally babies. Do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And there's a lot of childcare on board the ship too. So MSC has uh, playrooms from three and up, 
And then, you know, the teens. So there's arcades and rides and there's an entire water park, which is really cool. If I was a kid, it's like this pirate ship with this an octopus. So it's really fun. I mean, if I was a kid, I would be on those slides all day long. So it's very, very kid friendly. Um, you know, and then we get all the way to young adults um, and to, until the older audience. So it's, it's of all ages. That is neat. Yep. You know, Sandy, I don't know if you're full of speakers yet, but I, I I should have mentioned this to you. I don't know why I didn't think of him, but I know somebody that I think would blow your mind. I don't know if he's available, but have you heard of Dr. John Scharfenberg? I have not, but that's okay. Send it, Marissa. We'll, ch we'll check it out 100%. Sandy, he's going to be 101 and he still works full time as a, well, he doesn't like the word vegan, but you know, he is vegan doctor. And, and he's outliving like all the students he taught at Loma Linda University. And he's, I mean, he's flying all over the world, Madagascar and um, Malaysia and Guam, giving lectures on health. And, and he- right. sounds and good. I gotta introduce you because he would, I mean, he everywhere he goes, he just did a TED talk. He literally gets a standing ovation. Every, and he's actually my friend. Wow. He, lives, he lives near me. We became friends when he was 99. And, and he drives a little red sports car and he is the most, I mean, I, he's, just, he's just delightful. I think you'd love him. And I think he, I think people would love him too. That'd be great. Definitely hook us up. I mean, yeah, gosh, we have, he, we're, not, we're not filled up yet. I promise. If he goes, maybe I could go. With, I just he's he's. Oh, he's, you say that you're a teaser. I, know, you're a teaser. I just don't like the photo. Well, you're you know, we can't. We can get you. We can do one night. You know, we'll get you teach on the sea day, and then we'll we'll fly yeah, you back out. Yeah, you know, that's not, that's that's actually. That's that could be doable. Yeah, it you know, work. I miss we'll my make dog. it work. Yeah, yeah, that, that's interesting. But I think you would like him, Sandy. He's just he's just so darn personable. And, and 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 the reason I thought of him is because at the beginning of this talk, you were saying how it's not just the diet and how important exercise is. Right. And in his TED Talk, Dr. Scharfenberg was saying that's really a big deal, especially as you age. Maybe not so much, you know, when you're really young, but as you age, that's really one of the secrets of longevity. Of course, yeah. I say exercise also, the spiritual part of it, gratitude to be alive, gratitude for the food, gratitude to your life, your friends and everything else. You know, I use the expression with my friends, we say above ground, right? Above ground. And here we are, it's something to be said for that. Every day we say, thank you for being alive, right? Yeah, that's great. Well, I, I think it's so fun what you guys do. And uh, what do you do the rest of the year when you don't have the cruise? You're just planning the next one? planning and hopefully enjoying <laughs> a lot of life planning. a little bit too you know we get we good to get to take a little bit of time off you know hiking and playing and visiting with grandkids and marissa travels around and you know but we're always planning especially now we're going to do a second cruise i don't know if we'll ever have any time off maybe a third cruise maybe a land-based place because you're going to set me up you're going to call me no I, I know there's I mean I, I I may not be in an area that you want but I, I do you know because that's something I'm always thinking about is is events. everywhere no you know well before the cruise you know I did the land base for 30 years yeah where, where were you doing them at I did it from everywhere Miami Beach to uh California we did it in uh Palm Springs I was going to say because that's what I was thinking for a thousand yeah we did it in Palm Springs we did it in uh San Francisco we did it in Breckenridge Colorado we did it in all sorts of places all over the country. Yeah. I, my, and we want to expand, you know, that was the goal. You know, we do want to expand. We might have an announcement coming up at the end of this fall where we have a, a second cruise, but you don't want to share too much yet. Um, but we are excited about that. And, you know, the goal is what Sandy wants said, four, four cruises a year. And I'm like, let's go. So, wow. you know, we're, we're looking, we're looking into that. So that's what we're doing when we're not on the ship, we're planning and looking at other ways oh. to expand. So I'm, I'm excited for it. There's lots of new things coming down the pipeline. Yeah. Sandy you, know, you know, when I first started, you know, I had a natural food store and people used to say to me, well, what happens when the regular supermarkets start carrying organic natural food stuff? I said, I hope for the day that happens. I always find what to do. And same way with the cruise, same way with the vacations. I hope that every resort in the country has vegan offerings and every place is offering classes and stuff like that. I'll always find something to do. I'm not worried about that. Let's just turn the world on to eating well and being happy and healthy, right? That's what we're all about. Sandy, are there any speakers in the vegan or plant-based world that you haven't had yet that you wish you could have on the cruise? Well, it's, 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 as time has passed, but we've had, a, in the past, we've had, between the hotels and everything, 
We've always asked John McDougall to come and he always turned us down. I know. That's who I was thinking. It's like, and I asked him every year too. Every like, year. Everybody I mean, always asked him. I don't know. You know, he, he just didn't like to travel. It's yeah, I know, but we've been very fortunate because we've had between the land base. We've had, we've had uh Deepak Chopra three times on the hotels. We've had uh, even going back to the days of Harvey and Marilyn Diamond and all these people have been involved in natural food stuff from Dr. Benjamin Spock. He used to come a couple of times. So we've been very fortunate because what teacher doesn't like to come and talk to an audience of a thousand people? As much as a turn on for the audience, it's a turn on for the teacher. It's a high for them, you know? Come on, you're talking in front of a thousand people cheering you on. It's like a high for everybody. No, it's it really no. I have very very fond memories. I, every time I can, I mean, once I bit the bullet and just got over myself. And I went, know we got to get you. It's America. just I don't know what it is, you know me, but it it is really a truly wonderful event, and and and, and like you said, all the single people should really. I mean, that's where Robert Cheek met his wife. That's right. He's coming again this yeah. year. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm saying that Robert. Yeah, he thanks me all the time for that, and I thank him all the time. And I say that, and somebody, I, one of the years, one of the couples who came on the cruise, they asked me to marry them on the cruise. They met on the cruise, and they were there for a couple of years, and they asked me to perform the ceremony the following year when they came. That is really, really cool. Yeah. Well, I hope people will check it out. And I love, uh, Marisa, that you're saying there's some videos, because I think people need to like kind of see how fun it is you know yeah. to, to to but but i'm sure I, I, you know if, if you've been vegan or plant-based you know more than a minute I, I think everybody knows somebody by now that's gone that they can you know really ask like you know what hey. um, um i don't want to be naive about it but i'd say 95 percent of the vegan world does not know about the cruise i can't does believe not. that i am well then maybe they'll watch this show i cannot believe they don't know yeah i do i can't believe how many times we talk to people and we ask and they say they never heard of it and I don't want to, my, so my ego gets crushed a little bit, so hot. But it's incredible because people don't know. They don't know from the cruise. They don't know from- Well, the we're going to change that this year. And we're changing it this year. So I mean, we're, we're becoming a lot more, you know, visible. And so that's my goal. <laughs> I mean, I've seen, you know, I've seen your ads like in Veg News Magazine, for example, like, hmm. I know, but there's more than Veg News Magazine because hopefully there's millions of people, you know, the statistics are there's tens of millions of people who are vegan tens of millions these days now. And mm -hmm. I, I wish to say that whether it's Veg News or us or your show, we don't have millions of followers. Yeah. We have hundreds of thousands, which is wonderful. We want millions. Okay. We want millions of followers. We want millions of people embracing this lifestyle. Absolutely. We want to have everywhere we go, we want to have, here's the high five sign to be happy and healthy. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I hope people will watch and they'll you know, be inspired to sign up, especially when it's discounted. And it sounds like you guys are up to a lot of more fun stuff that we have to look forward to if you're going to do more than one a year. So maybe, you know, maybe the having new locations will have some people come that maybe didn't want to go to that it's location. True. You true. know, you never know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, people should come even if they're not vegan, though, just because it's just fun. And I, absolutely. I we, every year we always have people who are on the cruise on the other side, I'll call it, that come and sign up and join us. That's really cool. You know, I remember on the cruise one year, I met the gold medal winner of, I think I forget the sport. In, he was from Portugal. His name is Nelson Evora. I, sorry, I'm not good with uh, sports. I can't remember. And I brought him to one of the lectures. You know? Yeah. And we have people who sign up though, for the whole program. Yeah. They're not just for one meal or two meals. They say, we didn't notice what's this about. We're going to sign up for the whole week. That is really we have, cool. Well, let's get some we have of pe those people. Yeah. Let's, and we have people who come on who are inspired. My favorite story is my videographers from last year who were not vegan, but wanted, you know, did took on this project. And by the end of the trip, went home and started to eat vegan. And now is just completely inspired from watching all the videos of the, all these doctors and nutritionists of hearing the content and just went, wow, well, I should do this. And now they're doing that. So I love those. I love those stories. Um, you know, I've heard stories like that, like even in Forks Over Knives, I, I can't remember which, if it was the director or the editor, just by virtue of doing that movie, they went vegan, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Has, and I'm curious though, has anybody on the ship 
ever gone vegan just from working with your chefs or a hundred percent hundred percent matter of fact one of the people in the pastry department got so inspired with it he ended up marrying one of the bakers in the pastry department and they're like living now with a kid in europe and stuff like that totally changed his lifestyle not just becoming vegan and the, the hotel director he, they love they said when we come they love to eat with our food because they say this is the best, healthiest week. They eat with our dining room. That is so cool. Maybe you should change the name from Holistic Holiday at Sea to the Vegan Love Boat. Yeah, that's what I say all the time. That's what Sandy says all the time. Well, Maybe you call it the Love Boat. <laughs> I agree. You know the, the the you know the you know the name is everything, and so it's marketing because holistic. You know, maybe the holistic holiday. I see the the subtitle now, but that is so cool. <laughs> well, I wish yeah. you every success with your twenty twenty five sale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Absolutely. for having us. And thank you for seeing you. You look wonderful. Aww, you look younger you. than, than you did when I first met you. So you're Aww, thank great. you. So, well, like you, you know, diet and lifestyle, try to exercise every day, eat right. And, you know, I just want to ask you though, because, you know, we didn't delve a lot into macrobiotic principles other than chewing. But one of the things I know that macrobiotic uh, folks eat a lot is rice. And there's still this fear you know, because we, we were talking about, you know, our dear friend and mentor, Dr. John McDougall, about pe uh, carbs, you know, we can't eat rice. Rice makes me fat. Rice has arsenic. Talk a little bit about rice, because I love there's, rice. There's no one that eats more rice than I do. And, mm -hmm. and I don't care if you're Oriental, you're American, you're Latino, whatever it is, no one eats more rice. And if you look at me, trust me, if you eat, it's the most perfect balanced food. So if you chew your food really well, you don't gain fat. You don't get, it's, yeah. it's, it gets digested. So you got to chew your food and cook it I properly. Think that's the key. When you eat any grains, especially rice, chewing is ultimate, ultimate important because that's where it starts to break oh. down. That's, you need that enzyme to start breaking down that carbohydrate. So when people are concerned about the weight, you know, that's, that's what you need to start doing. Um, and, and the library is closing down. So I'm going to, going to get kicked right. out of here no, in just a minute. Hey, hey, so. No one needs more. <laughs> There's no one that eats more rice than I do. Okay. But, but Sandy, how do you address, time. when people say arsenic, how do you address that concern? You well, know? you know what, lumber, there's, there's definitely some better companies than others. And I always choose the best quality rice. And the best quality rice in California, where you have, I'm giving a pitch to lumber, their, their rice is the best. It's tasty good too. That's the brand I buy. Every flavor yeah. that I buy, it's lumber. It's just and, and you soak it also. I also soak rice. Even for a couple of hours, some people do it overnight and it makes them even more digestible. And so, do, you cook, yeah. do you cook it on the stove or in a rice cooker or in an uh, so, on the stove? Old on a gas stove. Well, you know, let's have you back and show me how to cook rice on a stove. I've never done it. I, 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 I mean, of course I cook it in lots of places. I, people give me presents of rice cookers. People give me, I was just away in Colorado in the mountains hiking as electric stove. You learn how to adapt. Wherever you are, you learn how to adapt, right? Yeah. And I cook rice, and so you have to, to, to key. I'm going to give one quick thing for rice. If you cook on an electric stove, you have to have two burners at the end. You, one, when it comes to pressure or when it comes to boil, then immediately have the second one that's on low. Because if you keep it on the high electric, it's still boiling for another five minutes. Yep. Good to switch point. it immediately. Nice. Well, that's thanks. My unsolicited <laughs> advice for brown rice. Thank you so much. Do you ever eat other colors of rice, Sandy, or just brown? Yeah, Black, yeah, of red, course, yeah. yeah. Brown basmati rice I just bought yesterday. And I have red uh, rahini rice. Yeah, I try it all. Good for you. Well, thank you. got to be flexible. In thank the world, you so much. Flexible. Yeah. So, so nice. They're going to they're gonna close down the library. Okay. And I don't want to get locked in here. All right. But well, we'll so say, thank you so we'll much say, for having me on. Thank, thank you. We'll uh, say goodbye to you, Marisa and Sandy. You know, look, Marissa, you, thank you. You, you eat AJ, rice. anytime you want, you call me. We're going to do plans of. Yeah. How to take over the world, right? Vegan, vegan world domination. One, one, one bite at a time. How's that? Absolutely. And hope to see some of you guys on the vegan love boat next year. And I hope to see much. you. And I hope to see you on the vegan love um, boat. Soon I'm working later. towards it. And thanks everyone for watching another episode of Chef AJ. Thank you. Take care. Come back soon. Bye,